when my daughter passed away, I remember collecting loads of tablets, loads of sleeping tablets, loads of uh, medication I got given like for my C-section, you know, loads of painkillers. And I remember saying like, if she goes, I'm gonna go too. And I remember my best friend was just like, she took, she, like, I remember she just hit like, took them all and I've like, been them. And she was like, you're not doing it. It's estimated that one in six people. 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 Will have experienced a common mental health issue in the past week alone. I literally spoke to Mike about a week before everything, everything happened. He was so young and he was, and he was doing, and he had so many good things in the pipeline to be doing. And it's just, it's just shocking that that, that that actually happens. He was like, obviously going through so much that no one knew. And he was called Muggy for like, that was his thing on Love Island, Muggy Mike. And Muggy's not nice. Half of the country know him as Bad Boy Mike. So he's not gonna wanna speak out about that. Or it's very hard at least. I think fame is a huge, issue and factor when it comes to mental health. Being in the public eye, you've, you've, you've got to go to, um, you've got to go to like loads of events, you've got to like do loads of things and, 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 and come across like you're happy. So if someone perhaps looked at Mike or Sophie and thought, wow, they're so beautiful, they've got so many great things in their life, like why would they ever feel like that? Well, Mike obviously went through like similar, similar kind of things to me. Like he had the bad, the, the, the bad, the bad press stories. He had all of that stuff going on. I didn't know Mike that well, but I met him at a few events. I mean, straight out of Love Island, actually. I remember I went for dinner with him, and I just remember he, he was he was just talking me through obviously his experiences and sort of how to deal with it. And for me, the fact that he said that to me, I just think, why have, why have you not been able to do that? Why haven't you reached out? Getting fame overnight and coming back into something when you're in a bubble for so long is really scary and people knowing who you are is weird. I, I, did, I did struggle when I came out and I think going from absolute madness in the public eye to it, it, there's, no, there's no two ways about it, it definitely dies down. I sat in my room for like two whole days just being like what the fuck is going to happen? Coming from that massive massive high, it's like having a hangover, you come from that massive high and you, you, you go to a low and it's hard to get yourself back up to that sort of happy medium where you were before. Now we all know better that um, it isn't all uh, glitz and glamour. I go through lows of different emotions. I can go really, really high and be really, really happy, but then my lows are really, really low. I was bulimic from the age of 16 till 21. I was competing, so I was just like always like strong, I guess, you know, in, in my like being, but actually in my head, I wasn't strong at all. I was actually the complete opposite. It was about two weeks I was just, I didn't leave my house. It was all crazy. There was like press, there was trolls, it was mad. And I felt like literally, what am I gonna do? My life's, my life's just ruined now. I went through a kind of like a long depression stage without even knowing myself. It was a very, very low point of mine. I'd, I'd be driving into work and just sort of looking at things of how to sort of not carry on anymore. I became just this sort of empty shell and still looked like the same person, the surfy kind of blonde haired girl, but um, there was nothing inside. I felt really, I don't know how to describe it, I suppose lost. I wasn't socialising as much as I probably should have been. Waking up sad every day and I had zero, zero motivation to do anything. I wanted to be with people, but then when I was with them, I didn't want to be with them, I wanted to be alone. Do you feel like quite alone? And then that's when you get anxiety, that's when you overthink, that's when you, feel like, you get a little bit upset and you feel a little bit lost. Mental health, you know, diseases, they do, they strip you of your personality and they kind of take over your whole life. Depression can take over and you can just feel so, so away and, you know, not with it. And you start drinking, you start partying, you mix them with the wrong crowd. And, it's just a downward spiral from then on. People who you think are least susceptible, you know, those people who, who, who may be like, perceived as good looking, you know, outgoing, good job, money, like, that doesn't, that doesn't affect what kind of goes on inside your head. And that's what I've been doing for years, is trying to put on like a brave face and being strong. You're doing yourself kind of thing to yourself like, I can't let my friends like know that I'm feeling like sad because like, I'm Mars, isn't it? Like, I'm meant to be this, this like, I'm, I'm bare chilled, I'm bare relaxed, I'm bare cool all the time. The more, I guess you're in the public eye, the more pe you, people expect you to be happy. Following recent events, and obviously the really sad passing of uh, Mike, I think it has been really important that a lot of us have, you know, particularly that have been on shows like that have kind of checked in on each other and said, you know what, if you are struggling, if you do need help, just say something. If you speak to someone who's close to you, who knows you, they can often rationalise things with you and help you 
put things into perspective. I'm really lucky to have a super supportive family, but even if you don't have a supportive family, there are so many people out there that can help you. I think to myself, I don't want to dig myself in a dark hole. Instead, I can be lifted out by a friend. I think that's really important to, you know, have these people in your life and just keep kind of bouncing that support between you and your friends. When you do feel alone and you're sad and you do feel suicidal and you don't know who to talk to, please talk to somebody. The biggest part for me was accepting that I had a problem and that was the moment where it all changed when I accepted that I had a problem and I spoke to somebody. I posted something a bit cryptic on, um, on my Instagram and one of the Love Island producers spotted it and uh, put me back in touch with a psychiatrist. That was a push I needed um, to sort of sort my, sort my issues out. Guys to work with, older guys like 50, so he goes, so how are you? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. He goes, yeah, but how are you? I was like, don't ask me, <laughs> don't ask me. Like one of them ones, because no, no one asked, like no one even bothers, bothers asking. You don't just, you know, you don't just ask like, mate, how are you as, as part of, you know, the opening of a conversation is, how are you, because you care. Are you okay? But don't just ask once, ask twice. You know, make sure they're actually okay. Don't just, it's not a throwaway comment, are you all right? Like, you know, if you know someone's struggling, ask again. It's not weak to talk about, to, to, to talk about being emotional or being sad or being upset because Everyone feels sad and upset. You need to break that stigma of, I can't talk about it because I'm a man. It's, it's, it's nonsense. When I accepted that I had a problem and I spoke to somebody, that was the moment where I, the penny dropped and I was like, OK, I can get better, I can do this. I personally, coming off the show, felt that I needed to talk through some of the things I've experienced, needed a bit of support, and I asked for help and asked for some therapy, which I am receiving, and I have no shame in saying that whatsoever. After speaking to the psychiatrist, it, it did take a weight off my shoulders. We got sort of little things, little steps in place to sort of, you know, progress, progress my life. I have therapy once a week. So I talk to this lady, she's amazing. And she'll just sit there and let me talk. I'll walk for long. But I'll be talking about things that I never knew existed within me. To me, there's no difference between mental health and physical health in terms of its importance. And it's so important to society that we, um, you know, treat mental health with the respect it deserves. When your brain is clear and has like more clarity, um, your vision of life and what you want to do and your friendship circle, everything around you becomes so much more positive. Having a good circle of people around you is what helps you get through tough situations because you can't do it by yourself. Even the smallest thing when you wake up, if you're bothered about it, then speak to your family or speak to your friends. So that you'll think you're alone, but you're really not. Be kind to each other, make someone feel like they can approach you and speak to you and just help your friends and check up on each other as much as you can. Be really, really good to yourself too and look after your own mental health because no one else is going to look after it for you. If you're suffering from a mental health problem... You're not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Reach out. Don't suffer in silence. Contact your GP. Or free phone the Samaritans. For confidential support. 24 hours a day. And 116. 123.